welcome to the talent couch. I know what you're gonna say, we're not even sitting on a couch. But that's the first sign to not take us literally. With us today is Kayla Ward. She is a motivational speaker and actress and pretty much run the whole gamut. I mean, what is there that you don't do? Really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you do all these things. And so what propelled you to want to do furniture sales by day? I mean, what brought you to that? It was really more or less just graduating college and trying to find a good career path. And I was stuck in retail. Ever since high school, it's kind of what I've done. Yeah. And I got tired of working at Hobby Lobby and being stuck with that hourly position. So I thought commission sales would be a good try. And that led me to Dallas. So I've been working here for two years selling furniture at Haverty's. Wonderful. Do you really enjoy it? Is it fun? No. No? <laughs> no. No. Who likes their day job? I mean, really. <laughs> Unless you're doing what you love to do, which is exactly. what you're doing on the side. <laughs> so I'm working toward, yes. <laughs> okay, so what's your life goal? What is it that um, you want to do in the future? Really, I love acting and modeling. Um, sports is kind of my biggest passion. I would love to try it for the WNBA. Um, but overall, it's the opportunity to educate and inspire and encourage people. Um, I lived in the shadows for a long time. Pretty much you can say I've been acting my whole life. Um, four years ago, I transitioned. I'm male to female transgender. And suicide is on our mind a lot. We, everybody who goes through this, I'd say transgender youth, that's 40 to 50% suicide rates. And to be out in the open and tell people that it's okay, you can be yourself, you can live your life and not really worry about anything, that's kind of my goal. I want the opportunity to do that on a larger platform. What really inspired you to take that leap? I mean, a lot of people say, oh, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of this and that, like all these excuses, what was it that just said, screw all the excuses. I'm gonna become the person that I feel like I am on, in, on the inside. And I don't care what's gonna stop me. My divorce. That was pretty much the only thing that led me to there because I tried everything I could to live that normal life. Um, I was an athlete, a jock, I, I played sports. I went to a Baptist college and got a Christian ministry degree. And I was ordained as a minister. Got married, that kind of, didn't really work out after 10 years of being together. So I got an email on my birthday that said she wanted a divorce and it killed me. It broke me apart in so many ways. And I was on the couch researching what pills I could swallow to end my life because I was done. And then I decided if I was gonna lose everybody anyway by committing suicide, why not just try to be happy for a change and finally live my life? So I took that chance, I took that leap, and life's been a million times better. They say that you have to hit rock bottom in order to change your life for good. I mean, that's essentially what it is. Everybody thinks, oh, they can't change, they can't change, you know? And I think that that's the reason why, is because we all have to hit that really, really rock bottom where we're like shifting the soil back and forth and we can't really get our feet out of it. And it's like, Finally, once you grab a hold of the side, it's like, you know, like you this, can breathe. Yes, and you're like free of all of that. Mm -hmm. I could not even imagine. I could not even imagine. So, who's somebody that really inspired you to become the person that you are today? Anybody? I don't think there was any one person. There's social media is the greatest platform to educate and encourage people and. Yeah. There was so many girls as I grew up that I saw on YouTube or MySpace, back in the MySpace days. And I watched all their transitions and it kind of told me I could do the same. But again, I hid that, I, I stayed away from it. Um, so I think just the collective group of everybody, I get messages every day from girls telling me, thank you for living your life and showing me that I can do the same thing. Now, as far as like people today, um, Laverne Cox is a great example. She's in Orange is the New Black. She's starting to become big in everything. Carmen Carrera is really the one I look up to a lot. She's she's kind of run the entire gamut herself. She was just a little gay boy that did drag. And then after RuPaul's Drag Race, got into modeling. And she 
turned it out. Like she's with Elite Model Management, LA Models. She's doing everything she wants to do. It's her dream and she's chasing it. She's not letting anybody tear her down. Right. And I love her courage and her inspiration. Yeah. Sometimes do you feel like the reason why people allow other people to tear them down is because they don't really know who they are inside? Is that kind of how you felt like in the moment, in the time? Some, but it's it's more than that. It's more than just letting other people do that to you. Um, I, I don't say that it's necessarily people saying things that, that keep you from doing what you want. Mm -hmm. it, it, start, it starts that. It's that causes that self-doubt. Right. But it's more or less just fears, fears of everything. I mean, when you, when you have the opportunity to lose your family and your friends and job, and now we've got these bathroom bills out there saying, I have to show them an ID to even yeah. use the restroom, which is ridiculous. The moment that somebody tries to check in my pants before I go to the bathroom, I'm punching them in the damn throat. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's so controversial, but just the way that life is today. I mean, really, it's just like all these lines, nobody knows where they're drawn anymore. They're very blurred. And so I think that's the reason why it is that way. You know, everybody's confused and don't know how to feel about it because it's so new to be able to embrace people for everything that they are. It's so new. I mean, if you look back, you know, 20 years ago, it's like nobody was talking about this stuff, you know. So I love the fact that we are so open and accepting of people and so knowledgeable in the fact that anybody could do anything with their life, irregardless to what it feels like in here. And I, I think that's amazing that you've been able to overcome that yourself. What really propelled you to overcome that, that struggle? I mean, besides the fact that, you know, a situation hitting rock bottom, but what was it like that you looked forward to? Like, what was it that like said, wow, this is me now and this is me where I want to be? life goals like what made you set those life goals like to go to you know to be motivational speaker to go out and talk to other people to share your experience what propels you to want to do that to make a difference it's all about making a difference um, I saw girls online from as early as when I was in junior high that because they lived their life out loud I knew I wasn't alone Because when you grow up in the age with no computers no internet I didn't have any of that I grew up in the country and I kind of felt like I was a freak, like there was something wrong with me. Obviously nobody else is like this. So seeing them told me that it was okay. And I've had people ask me today, why don't you just go stealth? You're a woman, be, be who you are and put the rest of that behind you. Right. I will never do that. It's, it's not, I don't think that's my place. My place is to live my life out loud so other people can see that it's possible. So my, my motivation is for everyone else. So you're all about helping others, which is beautiful. Yes. And so what's your life goal through acting, through motivational speaker? What, what is the end goal for you? Um, like, do you want to stay in Dallas and do it here? Do you want to, no. what do you want to do? <laughs> I love Dallas, but I really love LA. Um, the weather, just everything about LA, I really love. Um, Everybody loves LA. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the energy, the weather, everything. And the traffic, everybody loves LA. <laughs> Dallas traffic is just as bad. Oh, I know. Yeah. There's just been a couple bad. of times where I'm just like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done traveling here. I'm done. I, I will not go anywhere. Everybody's like, you haven't been downtown very often? I was like, are you kidding? No. <laughs> Downtown's not bad. It's when you get like going north during traffic hour, during rush hour, because everybody lives north of Dallas. I get lost past the south part, like in the middle of Dallas, and then all that random road. I, I get lost everywhere I go. I'm like, I don't know where to get off. It said, this is a road that wasn't the road. And I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm washing my hands of Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it here. I love the people. Yeah. So. Man, that's what I've loved. I love the people. The, the LGBT community here is amazing. I've got a lot it's of support. Very large. Um, even my job. I moved to my current job not telling anybody. I thought, at least for my job, I don't need to be outspoken. They don't have to know who I am until somebody Googled me. And that kind of changed things at work for a little while. Everybody treated me a little bit differently. 
until the Bruce Jenner interview came out on TV and announced, hey, I'm Caitlin. Caused a lot of conversation, which was good. It opened up doors for me at work. This is primarily an older crowd, but it, it gave me an opportunity to speak, which again, I'm shy, I'm not a great public speaker, I don't like to get out and do that. But for that, I'm very passionate. And if I can get my passion into it, completely changes it. Right. And I'm told a lot of times people can hear my, my ministry, my, my Christian ministry background in it, because I will. I'll really break down and go into things with, with educating people. They say things that are a part of you is much easier to be able to talk about. And, I mean, it's very much a part of you. And, and you believe in helping others, and so speaking out loud is a major part of that, right? Yes. <laughs> so... You want to move to L.A.? Yes. And be an actress out there? Yes. Act and model, hopefully. What type of modeling do you want to do? More print work. I'm not really the height for runway. Um, I I enjoy print work. I've I've done a few. Most of the stuff I've done in Dallas, a lot of the photographers like to shoot girls half to completely naked. So that's all you do here is like glam, bikinis, lingerie. Um, But I'm more interested in actual print commercial work. Like it's fashion model. Okay. That's where I want to go. Show me a print ad, what you would look like modeling this chair. Modeling this chair. This chair. Just this chair. Yep, give me a pose. Strike a pose, girl. Fashion I'm not used to yet, though, because all I do is glam. So I'm used to, like, trying to Well, let's you know, see it. Let's see your glam. Bring it. Bring the glam. Let's do it. I'm wearing too much clothes. Look right in there. And... Too many clothes. Now, that's not every day that somebody would say that, right? Exactly. (laughs) Especially modeling. (laughs) But it's hard to really do the chair when you're in the chair. So we'll we'll save that. Long legs, right? Long legs, long arms. But if you want to sell the chair, you got to try to not make the focus you so much. Okay, we got to take away from the the focus of the model. (laughs) The model is what makes the chair look good, though. It is. Which, again, (laughs) my experience in Dallas is I need less clothes to do that. (laughs) Or at least more makeup on. I know. I wish that everybody would just go. You know what's so funny to me is that nudity and less clothing is so out there all the time over and over again that you would think that everybody would say, you know what, that is less interesting than people clothed. I think it's so funny that that's still like a very interesting thing and people are still interested in that. And I'm like, it's everywhere. It is, and it's actually big in fashion modeling too. Yeah. Uh, Summer and I were just talking about that the other day, and you think that glam modeling includes more nudity. Right. But it's you're actually covered. You're wearing swimwear, a bikini, but in fashion modeling, they're just flat naked. Right, like Like holding a pillow or or Yeah. So it's true, it, it's, it sells, sex sells. Right, so where can we go to learn more about you and what you do and what you aspire to do? Um, you can pretty much just Google Kayla Autumn Ward and I'm everywhere, I'll pop up everywhere, but I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, YouTube. Most of them are tied together now under the uh, Kayla Ward official, but I do have a Tumblr that's my transgender journey. Um, I've got a Flickr account, I've, I've got everything out there. How do you keep up with everything and have a day job and do acting and modeling and ministry and you're tiring me out just even me talking about it? How do you do it? Like, how do you juggle it all? Well, see, I sell furniture. So that means there's a lot of dead time where you just sit on furniture waiting for customers to come in the door. Because if they're not coming in the door, I'm not making money, I'm not doing anything. Right. So I'm on my phone almost all day. (laughs) Aha. Uh-huh. So it's networking, <laughs> it's building all of that. Um, going to my first Mavs game in Dallas, I got to meet most of the team, and I got to meet Mark Cuban, and I took a picture with him. So I thought, I'm playing social media on this, too. I tagged him in the picture on Twitter, and it led him to connecting with me. He followed me, he sent me a message, he said huge respect for who you are and what you do. Um, that meant a lot. That gave me a lot of courage. and, and I don't know, confidence that I could actually do this. So somebody as big and as important as he is says, you know what, I'm going to take the time out of my day because I think she's kind of pretty. Um, that meant a lot. Yeah. So somebody playing that social media yeah. game is, it's important. 
It is important, especially if you really want to propel a really great career. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny how it's like always wrapped around all these media things? It's like, you know, 10 years ago it was like Didn't exist. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where did it all come from, right? We're so media-oriented. And so it is very important. And, and you know, you are so great. You really Thank are. You. And I hope that you just keep on this journey, and I hope that everything just falls into your lap. And, and I hope that for anybody who's willing to work hard and put their best foot forward every single time. And, you know, has there ever been a time where you did put your best foot forward and it, you kind of fell flat and then you had to get yourself back up again? That's a lie. It, it happens all the time. One of the, one of the times that really hit me hard was I was invited to be in a fashion show in Dallas and it was supposed to be a bigger production. It was going to be part of the O Network for Oprah series and all of that. I was walking for five designers. I had already done all the fittings, took time off of work on Saturdays, which is our busy day to go do it. And a lot of the other girls had, you know, two, maybe three designers they were walking for. And I was kind of trying to not play the transgender card. I didn't say anything to the people running it. One of the other models decided to take it upon herself to tell them, and they kicked me out of the show. Wow. Told me I could not participate. I could attend. They would love for me to attend, but I could not walk in the show. That is shocking because in the modeling world, they're always pushing boundaries and it's like, why wouldn't you want to push that boundary? Like, why wouldn't you? That's crazy to me. I would not have heard that in a million years. I wouldn't have think, you know. How did you get back up from that? How Did it hold you back at all or were it you did. just like, Psh, whatever? No, it, it tore me down for a little while. I, I was kind of lost. I thought, I'm not going to have any opportunity. I'm everybody's kind of connected in Dallas. The fashion world is a very big here. So several of the designers that were actually bigger designers participating in the show weren't going to let me walk for them. So they weren't going to let me walk for them in future shows either. So I really kind of almost gave up at that point. Um, and it wasn't until some other people reached out to me about maybe joining their modeling agency. And I got contacted by a couple of producers to work in a couple of local movies that I thought, okay, pick myself up, push through it, it's okay, it's just a roadblock, it happens. Happens all the time. And we have to remember our own self-worth in order to keep progressing. Mm -hmm. Because it's gonna happen time and time again. You have to self-reflect, come back, say how amazing you are, what you have to offer, and then keep moving forward, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like so important, especially in this industry. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. it's exhausting. <laughs> but I'm so happy for you. And I'm glad that you keep pushing forward. And I don't want anybody to ever, ever hold anybody back. Not you or anybody. Because, shoot, it doesn't just happen to you, right? No. It happens to people with wrinkles around their eyes, you know, or you know, people who are slightly overweight. No, I mean, like, in general, like, people will just pick on the little things about mm -hmm. you and say that you're not good enough. And we should never listen to those people. If they're saying that to you, then they have no clue what you're worth. It's true. High five to that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you, Kayla. Thank you. I, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Me too. You're so sweet. Thanks. We'll see you next time.